one 500 million pound nuclear powered submarine. Stealthy, silent, and deadly. Stand by the fire. Fire! Five elite submariners hungry for command. And one no nonsense examiner known as a teacher. Come on! You need to get this sus now. And if you think that's good enough, I will start taking charge. This is the world's toughest command course. All right, raise the attack. I am not convinced that you guys have actually grasped that. They call it the Perisher. Attack. Attack. Ship control, contact is continuing to charge. Made... If they succeed, these young officers will go on to command one of the world's most lethal military machines. But if they fail, their underwater careers will be over. You haven't seen nothing yet, trust me. The Perisher course students are halfway through their four-week sea trust, learning all the skills they'll need for command the hard way. As well as playing chicken with charging surface ships, they've risked running aground whilst carrying out reconnaissance in perilously shallow waters. And this is the man they've got to impress, teacher Jim Perks. It's not an easy course to pass. I'm the guy that says at the end of the day whether they've passed or failed. But now Jim has one less student to test. After Gareth Rag, known as Oily, quit the course. He informed me that he uh, didn't wish to continue the rest of the course. I've, just, I've made a decision that it's not for me. His career within the submarine service is finished. Him going is another 20% workload than all of us. So five perishers have become four. There are a couple at the moment that are showing early signs that they can do it, and there's a couple that are, uh, have still got to make that transition. Confident David Filthness, known as Filthy, could be the next to go. Uh, where we are, I don't believe he holds us at the moment. He's just started his search. We're going to be dead then, aren't we? Or could it be American Dan Reese? Wait a second, down! He's run into trouble with English safety rules. Reverse the plane, reverse plane. English Dan Martin has so far breezed through most of the challenges teachers thrown him. Come right, right, three, five, zero. Well done. Yeah, it's been all right so far. The problem is there's only one way you can go from there, isn't there? Six, six seconds. An intense Jeff Fillmore needs to make sure that stubbornness doesn't get him into hot water. Have you achieved your end? I want to get closer. Hey. I want to get closer to the lighthouse. They've still got, you know, just over two weeks to prove to me that they can, uh, they can achieve their goal. So far, the students have been carrying out single missions, evading just one or two surface vessels or aircraft. Now they're preparing for total war against many more. The Perisher Student Submarine, HMS Triumph, is about to join a major international exercise called Joint Warrior. It simulates an all-out war between two countries. We've got 30-odd ships here uh, during this exercise. We've got four different submarines. We've got 25 or more aircraft. We've got troops ashore. We've got all sorts of elements. So it's quite a big one in terms of mass, nearly 8,000 people in total. We don't often bring these number of platforms together for two weeks to deliver that sort of complex training that we need for the students who are embarked in Triumph. But first, Triumph must head north to take up position in the Sea of Hebrides. After being delayed in Faslane by a technical problem, that's proving something of a battle in itself. Because of the depth of water and other traffic in the area, the fastest and safest way is by traveling on the surface. That's something these underwater giants aren't designed for. That's going to mean uh, some pretty horrid conditions on board. You'll see uh, these seasick people about the place. So with a full-blown Hebridean storm brewing, the crew is in for a rocky ride. We're having pretty heavy seas and uh, heavy wind. It makes it a little uncomfortable for some of the people, and you'll see some of the guys 
or a, a little green in the face. 15 of the crew, including the head chef, are seasick. So down in the galley, Chief Stoker Paul Foran helps out with the cooking. The minute we're on the surface, getting knocked around like a tin can in the ocean, and uh, that's why we're losing so many people. What happens is when it goes into the wave, it goes down. But because of the fin, it tries to twist the whole thing. So you don't just got them down like that. You actually corkscrew, and that's why it's so hard to stand. And uh, it hurts. Even the hardest sea dog, it just starts to get you. But you don't actually feel sick, you just feel tired. Chief Stoker's cure for seasickness? Curry. Fire in the belly, fire in the balls, and no balls at all. Scott, watch the curries don't all mix in together, otherwise we'll be having mixed meat curries tonight. The joint warrior exercise will simulate war between two fictional states, Caledonia and Dragonia. HMS Triumph will be part of the Caledonian fleet, commanded by the British aircraft carrier HMS Ark Royal. Triumph's been tasked to defend the carrier from the threat of an enemy submarine from Norway called Ula. So here he is, it's just the west of us by, as I said, seven miles, and we're trying to move ourselves and the oiler now to the east, allowing the two frigates to set up essentially a barrier or a wall between us and him. But the best way for a fleet to protect itself from an enemy submarine is to use one of its own. So now the Parisher students face a completely new challenge. They're going deep for a series of sub versus sub duels. 40 meters, six down. That's really challenging, but um, you know, you get two submarines in the same stretch of water, you get that killer instinct and you want to get the first shot in. Triumph's underwater adversary is the Norwegian submarine Ula. She's a much smaller submarine, 59 meters long, compared to Triumph's 86 meters. 1,000 tons to Triumph's 5,000, and a crew of 21 to Triumph's 130. She's powered by conventional diesel electric engines. Although she doesn't have the speed or endurance of nuclear powered units, she is very quiet. So Ula's going to be much harder to find, track and evade than the surface vessels the students have been pitted against up to now. And she's on day 11 of the 28-day patrol, so she's very settled into the rhythm now, sir. The task whilst on patrol is to detect, track and attack the Ula. Deep underwater, the submarine's eyes, the periscopes, can't be used. So the students instead rely on sonar, the submarine's ears. When the submarine is below the water line and we don't have our other sensors out of the water like a periscope or uh, listening for radars, uh, sonar is the primary method we use to determine what's happening in the world around us. So there's two types of sonar. There's uh, active sonar, which involves us transmitting a ping out into the water and then listening for the reflection to come back or the echo. From that, we're able to determine if uh, there's something out there that's submerged contact. Marked on the fin, it looks like that one out there. The other method is passive sonar. And passive sonar is uh, just us using a whole uh, series of sensors that are attached to the outside of the ship to listen to the sound that's in the water. The Triumph's active sonar is located in the nose of the submarine. Its passive sensors are built into the sides. Both sonar systems can pick up sound from miles around. While active sonar can be more effective, it has one big drawback. Yeah, that's... As soon as you ping, you put transmissions into the water, you lose your stealth and you lose your ability to hide, so everyone else knows you're there. So it will be passive sonar that Jeff will be paying most attention to, as he takes the duty captain's hot seat for the sub versus sub duel ahead. It's a very valuable um, part of training for her and us because they're, they're few and far between. It's a, it's a difficult thing to do to try and remain undetected. There's guys on board, even in the sound room, never heard a dive submarine before. In order to be able to practice this and uh, hone our skills 
uh, with a real life submarine is absolutely invaluable. As jury captain, Jeff is in charge of overall strategy. <clears throat> he has to find the enemy submarine without being detected himself and then attack it. As attack coordinator, it's American Dan's job to execute that strategy. The submarines are now in position for the start of their duel. To prevent collisions, they're using a traffic separation system. Triumph must stay within one depth band, while Ula stays in another. One boat's got the top half, the second boat's got the bottom half, which means that the two boats can go anywhere, including on top of each other, in the same place, without hitting each other, because they're separated by depth. Yeah, we'll stay doing what we do. What I, don't want to, what I didn't want to do was charge in at speed. The battle begins. And Jeff is looking to his sonar team to detect Ula as quickly as possible. For the moment, we're getting no crossover on the morning. Is the indication that they're shallow or deep? So he can strike the first blow. I would suggest you, sir, they put them on the same side of the way as we are, sir. There's an unwritten rule in the submarine world that he who gets the first attack in wins. Doesn't matter how many attacks you get in, you need to get the first one in, because uh, once you get the first one in, you don't generally survive. Because they know where the layer is, and the gender put these... Of course, the crew of Ula knows that too. Ula has crept up on Triumph undetected and fired a simulated torpedo. She's sending a coded message called an Oscar Oscar Whiskey. Underwater comms audible. Oscar, Oscar, whiskey. She's claiming a hit. Jeff orders a check of the coordinates Ula has sent as proof. Check the bearing, see if it makes any sense. You only call guilty if it is, in fact, you. Okay, they may be shooting to the blind at this point. Correct. But Jeff has no choice but to confirm the strike with a coded reply. Romeo, Romeo, Romeo. It's all. Basically, we've acknowledged the fact that they sank us. With teacher recording every mistake in his notebook, yeah. Jeff must quickly recover from this bad start. Transmissions watcher, red 147, two down, one Morale has already hit rock bottom. And Jim is looking to Jeff to lift the gloom. But it's not happening. You need to start injecting some enthusiasm because that's. There are absolutely no interest in this control room. And if you think that's good enough, I will start taking charge. Pass 340. Okay. What is supposed to be the most exciting and most fun evolution we do on a submarine thumbs up bottoms. It's up to him to push his team. So whilst the entire control room basically weren't interested for the first attack, um, that's down to the captain. The duty captain has to take charge of his team, take them with him. If a submarine crew doesn't enjoy doing what we're doing now, then they shouldn't be submariners. Uh, it's as simple as that, as far as I'm concerned. Gents, want a bit of enthusiasm in the control room, a little bit of uh, aggression. This is not an exercise, this is for real. Pay attention, switch on, and let's do this properly, that's all. In the pressure of battle, good teamwork is vital. On the watch. I don't you... want to be in control of the weapon and do this bit. So the AC will take the weapon. I'm firing. I would but American Dan and the and officer of the watch are fighting their own war. I wouldn't be the AC with a weapon in a submarine engagement. Struggling to work out who should be doing what. The FCOs are wearing the weapon. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Jeff must quickly take charge of this distraction. Why did you talk to me? I'm not the captain. No. The officer watching AC were trying to fight basically over the same jobs. One of the issues that uh, these guys have got to sort out is the relationship between the duty captain, the attack coordinator, and the officer watch. Um, it can get very confusing uh, and complicated, overly complicated, if those roles aren't clearly defined early, early on. Uh, and they weren't. 
No, no, I don't, I don't need you to be here. Jeff has decided to cut out the middleman, American Dan, and work directly with Triumph's highly experienced officer of the watch, Dennis Fox. So what's the speed required to next waypoint, miles short? Or the, just give me the next waypoint, I'll work it out. Ready, boy? Back on the hunt, there's a sonar contact. Contact, weapon three, master zero one, bearing one three seven, range from the belt, from the yard, permission to continue the attack. But it's the target, continue the attack. Jeff seizes the opportunity to take revenge on Ula. Stand by the fire. Weapon system ready. Triumph's anti-submarine and ship weapon is the Spearfish torpedo. Armed with 300 kilograms of explosive, each one could take out a vessel twice the size of the Ark Royal. Depending on what type of target it is, will we'll determine how it detonates. Um, surface ships generally, the, the torpedo will uh, explode underneath it and uh, try and uh, break its back. And for a, a, a submarine uh, contact, clearly that, that tactic won't work. And uh, we try and um, uh, detonate on impact with, with the submarine target. For this simulated attack, down in the bomb shop, preparations are underway to fire a water shot. Just as in a real torpedo launch, air is pumped into a water ram. This forces water into the torpedo tube that pushes out the weapon. Track 170. The torpedo is controlled by guidance on the weapons desks, who can change its direction, speed and target right up to the moment of impact. Jeff sends Ula an Oscar Oscar whiskey to signal the strike. Oscar Oscar whiskey, Bill. 05, you can see if you want to. Roger, 30 seconds time, no response. Wait for another minute. Do it again. But Ula doesn't respond. Once again, Jeff looks to teacher for answers. Twice. No response. Really, Captain? Unfortunately, they didn't acknowledge it, so. So no hit for Jeff. But he's a fighter and determined to win through. Being in command is about, you know, it's as much about raising the troops and, and, and getting what you want out of them when it goes wrong as it is when it goes right. Kind of this it's up to you now. You've got to give the people the injection and give people the drive and, uh, and, and make it happen. OK, all positions, all reports, duty captain brief. Gents, that was a much better drill from start to finish, from detection all the way through to, to, to the engagement. All positions happy? Good, right, let's crack on. Officer Watch. Down 15, still 180. You'd have saved yourself a lot of grief if you'd done just that. Keep, just stay in these revs. Yes. Although Jeff's finally beginning to act like a captain for the first time in this exercise, Jim makes an extraordinary decision. I've given him an extra 24 hours uh, with duty captain now because he's taking a little longer to settle in and he's taking a little longer to to understand what's required of him as a duty captain. So hopefully this extra 24 hours will make him realize what it is he's trying to achieve. Jim's decision is a measure of how far Jeff still needs to go to keep his place on the course. While the idea of hunting with sonar may be simple, using it in reality is not. The challenge is isolating and recognising the thousands of sounds it picks up from miles around. They'll be listening to fishing vessel lanes, helicopters, aircraft, splashes. Uh, you can hear the waves on the beach. There's, there's lots of sounds out there they'll be listening and they'll be analysing. And if it's a sound they're unsure, we can capture it and, and repeat it and listen to it and break down that sound component and, co and compare it to a database. Well, it's not easy to take the, the sound that's in the water and determine what of it's just general noise in the background from the ocean and from fish and what is uh, related to a man-made man -made object like a ship or a submarine. So computer processing is used to take the sound signal and, and uh, create a small trace and these are displayed as uh, black lines on what we call the waterfall display. A sonar operator's waterfall display shows the background sound as white noise falling down the screen. The sound detected from a submarine appears as a distinctive dark line, a unique signature that can be identified. 
Sonar operators also listen to the actual sound from the sonar arrays, and they've just struck gold. They've picked up a distinctive rattling sound. It's coming from Ula. Now uh, we can just—he's got a casing bolt or a screw loose, uh, and even at slow speed, it's rattling uh, quickly. Uh, very easy to classify as a, as a dive submarine when you have a trace and something all along there. So. Standby to fire, Master Zero Eight. Weapon system ready. Fire. Fire. Fortune. Five seconds. Master Zero Eight, one hundred three, two five six. Too eager to shoot. Self into a decent firing position next time. Jeff has missed. He needs to be more strategic in the way he attacks. Submarines have a sonar blind spot right behind the propulsor at the stern. So the best way to win a submarine duel without being counter-detected is to get in behind your opponent before you fire. Jeff goes back on the hunt. This time, He's creeping up into Ula's blind spot. Watch out, that, um, and that ties in with the detection range we've received so far. What we're going to do now is get in the stern of her, and the stern arcs and get the trail. Also, have we got the FCS? Spot on. We'll fire, OK? Right. Stand by to fire, Master 08. Stand by to fire, Master 08. Stand by to fire, Master 08. Weapon system ready. Fire. Fire, 14. 15 seconds, and I want Oscar Oscar Whiskey bearing. Uh, Zero, one, zero. Another anxious wait for Ula's response. Revolution six, zero. Fast zero, eight, and three, zero, four. Romeo, 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 order one under water con. And this time, it's a hit. The attack has been uh, Romeo and Kate cast down the safety haven. Got him. Yeah, happy, you know, we were up for it, we are ready for it. Right place, right time, that's what you say. Right place, right time. A chance to practice some of the drills. Uh, yeah, content. One of several. A few more to go. At dawn, Ula withdraws from the exercise. It's a score draw between the two subs. And a chance for Jeff to reflect on his grueling shift. I'm here to sit in the captain's chair and, 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 and be the captain uh, of a nuclear submarine. I don't find him that challenging. He's uh, taken a little longer than I would have hoped, although he's getting there. Um, the one thing I can say about that man is he, out of all of them, is the one that wants this the most. So I can't ask for any more from the man. I think he's got it within him to pass the course. Uh, I just need to uh, ensure that I do my best to uh, give him the best shot. I can't say Next, Jeff and the other students must face an even more formidable foe. A submarine as big, powerful, and high-tech as their own. The Perisher course is taking part in the Navy's largest exercise, Joint Warrior. It simulates war between two fictional states. Triumph has been defending the flagship of her fleet, HMS Ark Royal, from a smaller enemy submarine. Jeff is finally coming to the end of his marathon 48-hour shift. He's doing extra time to make up for a poor start in his duel with Ula. I uh, personally learned a huge amount about myself, actually, in the last 48 hours. You know, I wrote down in my book after the first day and went, my submarine, my team, my responsibility, my fault which is a bit harsh, um, but that's what it's about. You've got to look at yourself in a really deep way and say, right, why didn't that work right? Uh, what can I do about that better in the future? OK, be ready. Being a submarine captain is not just about fighting wars, though. A large part of the role is administrative and managerial. Yeah, I'll make you hot bonk in there. So Jeff's final duty before going off shift is an inspection tour of the submarine. I'm doing uh, rounds of the submarine. 
captain's rounds are an opportunity to ensure that everything in the boat is clean, well stowed and secured. All right, so I'll okay. put that in the log as soon as you get down. Grease locker. You have a good look around the boat, behind every compartment, behind every locker, behind you get to know your submarine. It doesn't have to be done every day. It just wants I know, sir, I know. Yeah, I'm writing it down off. And it also gives you an opportunity to go around and speak to people in compartments that you perhaps wouldn't know that. I'll not put that down, I'll leave that for you then. So what does the crew think makes a good submarine captain? Coxswain Ginge Clifton has one of the most important and varied roles on the boat. He manages ship control, keeps crew records, arbitrates in disputes, produces the sub's newspaper, and even runs the sweet shop. And Ginge has clear views on what the parish of students need to be aiming for. A good captain is somebody who listens to his crew, works with his crew, and understands his crew. Now, the, the students we got on board are knowledgeable, experienced, and I think that all of them will make very good captains. The students are now preparing for the next phase of the Joint Warrior exercise, in which Triumph is playing a vital role. She brings a huge amount of capability to a task force like my own. She dominates water space. She tells me where the enemy's submarines are. She can give me evidence of where their ships are. She can listen to their communications. She can feed that all back to me. And then, if needs be, I can invite her to go on and, and, and engage with the enemy. Having defended the Ark from a smaller diesel-electric submarine, Triumph now has a new task, to defend the Ark from a much more formidable foe. As Triumph's sister ship, HMS Turbulent is almost identical. So she's just as big, powerful, and deadly. Success in this nuclear duel will come down to the skill of each boat's crew and the quality of the students' command. Dear Captain, sir, welcome to the command brief for the Subtech X versus HMS Turbulent. Aim of the uh, exercise. <laughs> Taking over as duty captain on board Triumph, English Dan is well up for the challenge. Okay, gents, it's turbulent. It's uh, it's one of your sister boats. You probably all know people on there. Uh, I know I know people on there. So you know there is a question of pride at the moment. So you know they'll be as keen to uh, get one up and impress as well. That means we've got to have that same hunger when we uh, deal with this. Six a.m. With hostilities about to commence. Triumph prepares to run silent, to make it as difficult as possible for Turbulent to detect her. You'll see that submarines don't slam doors. We don't drop things on the deck, because any time we drop those things or make a noise like that, it could be transmitted from inside the submarine to the hull and then from the hull out into the water, and someone can detect that. The laundry will be closed, and even personal washing will be restricted. To make water uh, requires us to make noise. And then to get rid of all the wastewater requires us to make more noise. It's just easier to say, don't use the water and don't create the waste. When water gets really, really tight, especially when submarines are operations themselves, it's not uncommon for effectively people to be given no more than a cup full of water a day to brush their teeth and do what they need to do. So a cup full of water should be all you need to have a quick brown bath uh, and wash uh, and brush your teeth. We would rather uh, make sure that we are at the top of our game and we have the advantage over the enemy than uh, worry about whether our socks are a little smelly. On board Ark Royal, Triumph is given the order to engage Turbulent. But this is not going to be a straightforward battle. Turbulent will be getting the support of an airborne anti-submarine asset that has just flown in from across the Atlantic. 200 miles away at RAF Kinloss on the Scottish mainland, the crew of a Canadian maritime patrol aircraft is being briefed before taking off for a submarine hunt. Your target, one multinational force SSN. This Lockheed Aurora is purpose-built to hunt and destroy submarines. She has a powerful radar housed in her nose. A high-performance electro-optical camera controlled from inside and carries 87 sonar boys. 
This is the ordnance section of the aircraft. We store about two thirds of the Sonoboys here, and the remainder are stored externally under the aircraft. Uh, the ones that are internal, we can we obviously have access to, uh, and you can see that there's settings on them. So, how deep do we want them to go? How long do we want them to be operating? Um, so, this is this is what size the sauna boys are. The cap pops off, and then the, the internal components fall out. And it's a uh, it's a flotation bag at the top with a radio transmitter, and then there's a, a cable that spools down a hydrophone and. It's just a directional hydrophone that, that can tell what direction the sound is coming from. The aircraft typically hunts for up to six hours at a time. And has a range of 9,000 kilometers. Back at sea, duty captain Dan Martin is maneuvering Triumph into position for battle. He starts with his usual confident, if slightly cool, delivery. We've got to remember our drills when the excitement starts to build, OK? But his confidence is short-lived. Has she come back with anything yet? Nothing, sir. His sonar team is struggling to find any trace of turbulent. There's no trouble. This is a moment for Dan to G up his troops. But that's not been one of his strong points. Duty captain. Yeah, Are you happy with this? Sorry, sir. Are you happy so far? Jim goes in heavy. Are you happy? Yes, sir. You're happy with the way this has gone so far, are you? Yes, sir. Well, I'm not. Yes, sir. You should be unhappy yeah. about. The officer watch is the only one that's keen in here. He's looking at that screen. Incidentally, which he shouldn't be doing, because you should tell him to go and sort the solution out. Yes, sir. All right? Yes, sir. Generate some enthusiasm. No one likes to uh, sort of be told they've uh, done something wrong, and uh, it's even harder when it's done essentially in a patrol room full of people. But uh, you just need to pick yourself up and get on with the uh, the next events. You know, as long as you make sure you learn from your mistakes, the teacher's happy. As Filthy takes over as duty captain, the hunt for turbulent continues. Well, at the moment, um, my command aim is to uh, is to hunt down Master Zero Nine H Miss Turbulent, regain solid contact on her, and get ourselves in a trail. Last minute. Zero one five. He's been asked to raise Triumph's radio masts above water to contact Ark Royal for further instructions. In a war scenario, with enemies actively searching above, this can be extremely risky. Triumph's masts have barely been raised when they spot the maritime patrol aircraft. <laughs> Having picked up Triumph's masts with their camera, the air crew prepares for a sonar boy drop to track the submarine as it heads deep underwater. <laughs> The boys are placed into one of the three pressurized sonar launch tubes and fired out of the bottom of the aircraft. In a real combat situation, they'd also be carrying a belly load of torpedoes. Sonar button drop, bearing 114. Roger. We had the masts up, and sure enough, the aircraft detected us and started laying active and probably passive barriers around us as well. But as I say, the priority remains uh, Master and I Turbulent. Filthy's now got to continue his hunt for Turbulent in the knowledge that the aircraft's boys are tracking his every move. Obviously, the bio changes after, after sunset, very I think the noisiest water is over towards the west. I think on every occasion, if we can, we're going to be able to this summer. Right. Filthy's got to be creative. Just give it a go, then. His solution is to make use of a natural phenomenon. The temperature and salinity of seawater varies according to its depth. This can create so-called thermocline layers that deflect sound. Filthy has a choice of staying below the thermocline boundary to hide from the aircraft's sonar boys. Or moving above it 
to hide from turbulent down below. What we have to do is come up with a plan which maximizes our chance to see her first and get the first shot in. What we're going to do is uh, go as slowly as we can and then we, we position ourselves above the layers. And I'm going to have my flank arrays, the largest arrays I have, the longest range detection arrays, open in the direction that she's coming from, which will be the south, and then uh, hopefully pick her up first. As soon as I get it, I'll order the attack. It's a cunning and courageous plan. Gone for being above the air, and I've made my decision. I'm going to be at 60 to 65 meters stop. He's trading his safety from the aircraft for an advantage over the enemy submarine. But there's a problem. Possible target zig. Turbulent isn't playing by the rules. Check the original signal because he's so far out for bearing. We may have got it wrong. Check the signal. No, I've checked it. I've checked it. His cheating is coming in the other way. But breaking the rules is all part of the game and even encouraged. Turbulent has become the hunter, and Filthy's grand plan is about to be severely tested. Parish's student Filthy is at a critical moment. He's dueling with Triumph's sister ship, Turbulent. But Turbulent's crew is scuppering his strategy by disregarding pre-agreed rules. Here, my intention is to stay exactly where we are, as slow as we are, minimizing our plane movements. Command aim remains, tracking Master 09. If we hold him at 2200, we will be shooting. That's all. Master 09, number N, 306, Raven right, Finn, rise on the bear. Filthy decides to stick to his plan, hiding from the enemy submarine above a thermocline layer. Stand by FCS Master 09, bearing 310. The plan stands. I'm in a good place. I'm down at two knots, making a very slow turn. Uh, and actually, it's all playing into our hands here. He's, he's up in the quiet water at the moment. That's when you get a water shot down the bearing. He's up in the quiet water at the moment. Two minutes. It's just very discreet and I'm rising back. Right? What Filthy needs now is a firm fix on Turbulent from his sonar team. Good enough. Hello, Pete. Good. That's him. So I see how long? We'll say two, counterfire established three and four chip. Weapon system in weapon running state two, counterfire established three and four chip, Roger. Ship control. It's about one minute to fire in, think about pitch angle. Plot, count me down to when I can fire. 20 seconds. Quick fire. Track 170. Fire. Three tube. Five seconds to discharge. Ready. Power on. 20 seconds, I. 20 seconds. Discharge correct. Three tube. Weapon bear. Two three eight. Discharge on my Weapon three. Bearing. Three, four, three, five, four, nine, five. Sorry. Oscar, Oscar, whiskey bearing three, four, five. Oscar, Oscar, whiskey. They contact Oscar's Turbulent whiskey. with an Oscar, Oscar, whiskey to confirm the strike. No reply to underwater comms, was it? But either they've missed or she's still not playing by the rules. No confirmation, Romeo, Romeo comes back. Active contact, weapon three, master zero and I bearing three, five, one, range yards. Continue the attack. That is the target, continue the attack. Home in, weapon diving. Weapon system ready. Fire. Fire, four, two, six, 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 So filthy fires again. Master zero nine, knock out on the sound. Oscar, whiskey. Any response? Yeah. Romeo, Romeo, Romeo. Romeo, Romeo, Romeo. This time they get a positive Romeo response. Filthy strategy has paid off. Good decision then to go above the layout. Very, very slow. Smacks of planning, do you think? Well, some planning. Filthy can't wait to tell the rest of the boat the good news. Jim Captain speaking. For the last four days, you've had in your daily orders about the importance of the sub with uh, HMS Turbulent. 
You'll be delighted to know that therefore you have just successfully engaged HMS Turbulence at 2200 and then, because she was cheating, again uh, five minutes later, well done. This is a winning team here, the mighty triumph. Any time, any place, anywhere, we shall triumph. Didn't acknowledge our first attack. Um, so he transmitted at her and fired again, and the uh, second time she, she was forced to acknowledge. So uh, uh, it was a uh, pretty successful attack, all in all. Not feeling at all smug because I know teacher will turn me off, but <laughs> thank goodness for that. <coughs> Another half a dozen, and they might uh, realise who's the best in the fleet. Weapon system ready. Fire, fire, sweet. Romeo, Romeo, Romeo. Gold, zero, X-ray. Fade range. Standby, spearfish attack. Fire! It's a turkey shoot here. It really is a turkey shoot. Do him and keep doing him. Keep doing him, Roger. Romeo, 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 Romeo. As Triumph keeps firing, Turbulent hasn't retaliated with a single shot. The score is 5 0. Uh, officially, it's 4 0, however. The other watch are claiming it's five. I've never ever heard of it getting beat this badly before. It suggests she's still not able to detect triumph above Filthy's thermocline layer. It's 2.30 a.m., four hours after triumph first struck turbulent. Okay, so we're coming back left to try to regain her. As soon as you get a good strong hold, we're going to attack. American Dan takes over as duty captain. After being asked to step down as attack coordinator against Ula, this is a great opportunity for him to redeem himself. Standby fire, Master 09. Standby fire, Master 09, bearing 004. Standby Master 09, bearing. Fire! Throughout the rest of the night, Dan puts in a tough and uncompromising captain's performance, landing three more hits on Turbulent. Romeo, 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 with no counter attack. It's been a fantastic 24 hours for HMS trial. It's a good feeling. Missions accomplished. The students break away to rejoin the main Joint Warrior Task Force. Safe in the knowledge that they can hold their own against highly experienced submarine commanders. They've all shown dramatic improvement. But the Perisher course is not over yet. Next time. So near, yet so far. With just days to go, the students face the fight of their lives. Their mission, to destroy as much enemy shipping as they can. Stand by, spearfish attack, take track. And if any of them do get past us, we should be ashamed. All of it's been tiring. But they're all worn out, especially intense and frenetic Jeff. I don't function very well even if, if I'm you know, absolutely knackered. Filthy's confidence deserts him as he runs and hides. Therefore, my priority now is evasion. How do they know where, they, where you are? They're closing me all the time, sir. So, so the risk of counter detection is increasing all the time. We did not become the best submarine service in the world by constantly evading. American Dan's cool is tested to the limits with a dose of information overload. Uh, got the guy at anchor over there, possibly that guy there. Two guys brought us bearing 351. Just got tucked into Washington by Stern. I think you get something, really something. He's allowed himself to be swapped by Data. And come judgment day, no one can be sure who's made it through. That's still not saying. <laughs> I don't know. Come on in. And the substitute.